When you're preparing your message, it's really helpful to be crystal clear on three vital questions. Those questions are, what do I want these people to know? What do I want these people to feel? And what do I want these people to do? If you can nail down those three very vital questions, every sermon will go smoothly. We're gonna talk about those three questions, why they matter and how to ensure that you get the answer to those questions before you get up to preach. In this episode, this is episode 80 of the Preaching Donkey Podcast. My name's Lane, I am your humble host. Welcome, thanks for being here. I wanna give you the 21 day guide to creating killer sermons. You can go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days. Pick it up there, it's free. It's a three week, three step process that will walk you through how to create and deliver a compelling, life-changing message. So whether you've been preaching for a long time and you're just looking for new and fresh approaches or you're brand new to preaching and you're trying to figure out how to do it, there's something in there for you that will help you. Preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days, pick it up there. The three things that must be clear before your sermon is ready to preach. This is an article I wrote over at Preaching Donkey back in February of 2015. My graphics were getting a little bit better. I was starting to experiment with newer fonts and still terrible, but a little better. A mist in the pulpit is a fog in the pew. This is from Charles Haddon Spurgeon. With each sermon you preach, you should be crystal clear what you want your people to take away from it. If you are murky about how they'll be able to use your message, then you can be sure they'll be clueless. Not to mention they'll pick up on your uncertainty and check out because their time is valuable and you have chosen to waste it. So it's really important to understand that you set the tone for how people interpret your message, how people feel about it, how they perceive it. So if you are murky and unclear about where your message is going, how it is to be understood, how it is to be applied, then you'll, you can guarantee if you are murky, they're clueless. And that's not their fault, by the way, that's your fault. That's because you didn't do the work necessary to bring clarity to a situation that they're waiting for clarity from you on. As preachers who want to communicate well, clarity must be a top priority in every sermon. But it's easy and sometimes necessary to focus uh, to focus most of your prep time on your content and not on your listeners. What I mean by this is when you are preparing your message, you're doing just that. You're preparing a message. You're thinking about the words you're going to say, how you're going to say them. You're looking at the text. You're trying to understand it. You're putting together an outline. You're putting together a, a bottom line for the message, points, supporting points, illustrations, applications. All of that is happening. You're working on the message and you're preparing the words you're gonna say and how you're gonna say them. Who's left out of that equation? The listener, right? If we're not careful, all of our effort is focused on the content and not on the listener. This is why to have a balanced approach at preaching prep, at sermon prep, you have to also focus on what do I want my listener to do during the message? This makes it crucial to think through how your listeners will receive and use your message. I wanna give you three simple tests that will help you ensure that your sermon is ready to go in terms of its impact on your listeners and their ability to apply it. This is a drop dead simple approach and it's meant to be. So if you're looking for something complicated and crazy, this ain't it, but this works. At this point in your prep, you have already done the complicated stuff. This is the icing on the cake that helps you ensure a strong focused delivery that accomplishes what you want. These three tests do not originate with me. They're as standard as it gets, but so helpful. And, and there'll, there'll be another tool that you can easily use to prepare. So the three things that must be clear before your sermon is ready to preach. Number one, what you want your listeners to know, okay, or information what you want your listeners to feel or inspiration, that's number two, and then what you want your listeners to do, application. So know, feel, and do, information, inspiration, application. Those are the three things. 
I like to think of it in in terms of no feel and do because it's just shorter words. It's easy to remember. What do I want them to know? What do I want them to feel? What do I want them to do? What is the information? What is the inspiration? What is the application? It doesn't matter how you do it. The point is there are three things you have to get to. So let's talk about the first one. What you want your listeners to know or the information. When you get up to preach, you need to be clear about what information you want to get across. Paul in Romans 12 says that we are to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. This means that the word of God should be continually changing the way we think. Your sermon is one of the building blocks of this transformation for your people. So if you think about it this way, it is really important that they leave knowing something. doesn't have to be something new. doesn't have to be something novel. doesn't have to be something they've never heard before. They just need to know something. They need to connect with a truth, with an idea from the scripture that's powerful. People can't remember everything you say, but they can remember some of it. You should determine what is the most important thing you're saying and ensure that you're, you're communicating it clearly. For your listeners to walk away knowing what you want them to know, you must avoid information overload. One way to prevent this is don't preach too long, don't preach unclear, don't preach too many points. Preach in a way that is focused. One of the ways that I like to do this is center my entire message around a bottom line or a main idea, a key thought, and then let all of my supporting points stem from that main idea. But it's the idea, and I want to summarize the entire thesis of the message in a in one sentence, one phrase that is pithy, that is applicable and powerful and memorable, okay? I've talked a lot about this, how to craft a bottom line that works. You can look throughout the archives of the show and find that. You can also just take one of my courses, preachingdonkey.com slash courses. The point is, the way to really hone in on what is the one thing they need to know is to define a bottom line, draw their attention to it earlier in the message, refer to it throughout the message, bring their attention back to it at the end of the message, and send them out with it. That's why the bottom line is very, very important. Now, they're going to, you're going to want them to know more than just the bottom line, but the bottom line is the synthesis. It is the, it is the one sentence that sums up all of it. That's why it's so important. Information transfer, though, is not enough because people can know what they need to do, know what they need to know, uh, and be completely comfortable doing nothing with it, right? You're, you ever been around church people, <laughs> right? They know what they need to know, and they're more than comfortable to do nothing with it. There is more to preaching than making ideas clear, which leads to the next test, and that is, what do you want your listeners to feel? This is the inspiration. So how will your sermon connect with people's hearts? Think of the sermons that have had the most impact on you. You, you probably don't just remember the facts that were shared, but the way you were made to feel. It wasn't the fact, but the powerful story beautifully told that truly moved you. Your listeners are the same. They want to be moved at an emotional level. They want to be inspired to be lifted up, to be encouraged, to be challenged. You should determine exactly how they should feel as a result of your sermon and aim to create that feeling. For more on how to connect with the emotions and feelings of your listeners, check out the episode that we did on building tension. I talked a lot about this last week on the podcast about how important it is to capture people's emotions, their hearts, the feeling of it. That's so vital because without that, if you have all the facts and you've decided what you want them to know, but they don't feel it, nothing is going to happen. Nothing's going to get done in terms of it connecting to their real life in a way that matters to them. So really think about what do I want my listeners to feel? What is the inspiration? Sometimes the best way to do this is to make sure that you're vision casting. This is one of the steps that I teach through in my course Killer Sermons Academy, which you can find, again, preachingdonkey.com slash courses. But in my main, the main course, the big course, Killer Sermons Academy, we talk about the four-step flow of outlining your message. And that last step is to cast vision and inspire. And one of the things that I like to do and that I like to teach is to always punctuate your message with capturing the imagination of your people 
around application. What I mean by that is you want to get them to imagine what it would look like, what it would feel like, what it would be like if they were to apply the message. If they were to actually believe what's being shown and taught in scripture and go live it out. Wouldn't it be exciting? Wouldn't it be life-changing? Wouldn't it bring more peace, more love, more joy? Wouldn't it be uh, just unimaginable in our current state to imagine a future like that, a desired future? That's vision. And then to broaden that and say, what if it wasn't just you that did it, but what if it was all of us? What if everybody who calls this church their church home believed that this was true, took God at his word, and applied this truth to their lives. What would that look like in our community? What would that look like in our church? Get people to feel that. Sometimes you can get people to feel that with a story. In fact, that's probably the best way. And with a little bit of imaginative language. Like what would it be? Imagine what would it, what it would be like if we were to live this out. Those are some of the things that you can do to really help people understand and connect the knowledge to the feeling. And then finally, what you want your listeners to do, application. You need to put handles on your message that people can grab onto. You need to be crystal clear what it looks like for your people to apply your message in real life. So for more uh, on how to give clear application to your messages, check out the, the podcast episode that we did on creating your desired response and your objective for your message. It was the two questions that you needed to nail down before you preach. But when you're thinking about what you want your listeners to do, the application could be a number of things for a number of different people, but it's helpful to nail down what is the thing that if they were to, this is the desired response. This is where you define ahead of time, what is the thing that if they were to do this as a result of watching, attending to this message, listening to this message, it would be a success. What's that one thing? Is it to take a step in their daily prayer life? committing to that? Is it to begin giving? Is it to serve in a small group? Is it to volunteer in some way? Is it to share their faith with a neighbor or friend? What is it? Define what that is for this particular message and make sure that that is defined. If you're asking the question ahead of time, this is what it looks like for my listeners to apply the message then this is what I want them to do. This is how it is applied. Sometimes that's gonna be very specific, right? Take the card out of the seat in front of you and sign up to serve at whatever event. Very specific. Sometimes it's gonna be more general, right? Listen to what God is saying and do what he says. Take a step in your faith. There's room for all of it. Every message calls for something different. But if you define that ahead of time, then when you get up to preach, it's way easier to put all these things together. What do I want them to know? What do I want them to feel? What do I want them to do? Sermons must have all three of these elements to be effective. Information without inspiration is boring, right? So if it's just, here's what you need to know, but I'm not gonna make you feel anything, it's boring. Inspiration without application is useless. You ever been really expired, but, or sorry, really expired. You ever been really inspired by something, but you just didn't care about it? Like you're really inspired, but there's nothing to do with it. It's, it's useless. It might make you feel good, but there's nothing, there's nothing there. A simple equation to make sense of it all is information plus inspiration plus application equals a killer sermon, which is what we're all about. So what other things do you do to ensure that your sermon will accomplish these things before you preach? What, what is the approach you take? This is one of the ways that I like to measure a message before I get up to preach. What do I want them to know? Okay, my bottom line, got it. Is, it. is it a worthy bottom line? Does it make them feel something? Because I want them to feel something particular. What is it that I want to make them feel? And then what do I want them to do? Is the application clear? Am I clear on it? And will it come across in a clear way? I do that before every message. I think it would help you to do it as well. Hopefully this was helpful to you. Again, go to preachingdonkey.com slash 21 days, grab your free guide. It will help to make sense of all this as you put together your way of preparing and delivering a message. Until next time, remember if God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through you and he can speak through me. We'll see you next time here at the Preaching Donkey Podcast.